What's up, y'all? Kevin Kuhn here from Athlete Factors Podcast. This is episode number seven or eight. I don't remember right now, but anyway, <laughs> regardless, I'm here with Derek Stanley, who's a personal trainer and nutrition coach. How we doing? Good, man. How are you? I'm doing very well. Thank you. Yeah. Living it up on a Friday. So Nice, man. Looking forward to a long weekend, huh? Yeah, you know it. You know it. <laughs> A little time away and a little relaxation. So, nice. um, so tell us uh, a little bit about yourself, where you're from, uh, how you got to the point you're doing what you're doing now, and yeah, just cool, uh, man. So you want the whole whole backstory here? Uh, yeah, man. All sure, right, why not? Yeah. So um, I was a uh, high school athlete first and foremost. Uh, primarily played basketball and ran track. Ironically. I absolutely hated lifting weights in high school, did no kind of strength training. I was the guy that sits over there on the leg extension machine and just like makes a sound every few seconds so that my coach <laughs> thinks I'm doing something. So huge slacker. Um, but I wish that I knew the benefits of strength training whenever I was in high school and I probably would have been a much better than average athlete. Um, mm -hmm. So then I started uh, lifting right after high school. I think it was mostly to kind of fill the void from sports, like you're not playing sports all the time and you don't have those practices and everything. So it seemed like strength training was just kind of the next step. Um, so I started working out, uh, really enjoyed it, started making a little bit of progress. Although even then I still had no idea like what I was doing for the first like couple of years I was training as I'm sure like maybe you can attest to like when you first go into the weight room, you just start oh, doing yeah. like random machines and like I have absolutely no clue. Um, but yeah, so as I started training and everything, I was kind of thinking about what I wanted to do long term. And I decided to do uh, or go get a kinesiology degree. And mm. again, the slacker that I was, I wanted to do this because I thought that it was going to be easy and it was going <laughs> to be to be a basketball coach. But nice. it was not easy. And the yeah. college that I went to, which was Texas A&M uh, Commerce, they had a really good kinesiology department. Mm -hmm. And I learned to really enjoy like how the body moves and performance and nutrition and every single thing that comes along with it and kind of just fell in love with it. So by the time... I graduated and I even went through like I did an internship for teaching and coaching and all that. But by the time I graduated, I was looking for a coaching job. It was really tough to find. My wife was like, why don't you just apply at like Lifetime Fitness and, and let's see what happens. Mm -hmm. And so kind of on a whim, I applied at Lifetime Fitness as a job uh, to be a personal trainer. Um, got a call back. Did not think that that was going to happen because like I was, saw on the website that they usually require, you know, training experience, degree, certifications, and all that. I didn't even have a personal training certification at this time. Mm -hmm. um, but anyways, got the call back, went through all the interview process, got the job as a personal trainer at Lifetime, trained there for a little over five years. Um, and then I started talking to this guy named Mike Dola, who is the CEO for Stronger You. And he's like, hey, man, like, you should come on board and be a nutrition coach online. I uh, thought he was full of crap. I was like, there's no way this is as good as you say it is. There's no way I can work from home and have a flexible schedule and all this. But sure enough, I uh, decided to do it. So I took the job with Stronger You. And now I work almost full time as a coach for Stronger You, uh, coaching mm. people on nutrition, primarily fat loss. And I'm also a personal trainer where I train clients out of my garage too. So that's kind of the entire from high school to where I'm at now. <laughs> Very but, condensed. Yes, yes, yes. Nice. It's been an interesting journey, but I love it. Yeah, so um, we met at a uh, Lane Norton uh, squat and deadlift seminar. That's right. Um, it was uh, it was on my birthday a couple years oh, ago. Nice. So that, that was my present to myself. When, when uh, was that? Was that like... In probably like 2015, 16, 15, yeah. somewhere in there. Yeah. Okay. It was a while Been back. a few years. Yeah. 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 Okay. And uh, I started following you on, you know, Instagram and, and Facebook. And it was kind of right around then, I think, when I started to see some of the transformation stuff that you started putting up. And I was like, this guy, <laughs> this guy knows some stuff. Right. And thanks, man. All the posts that you put up, like everything is so practical. Everything, like it's nuanced. It's not right. like, don't be stupid and eat this thing. Or like, it's just very like, I don't know. I think everybody needs to follow you so that they understand like, you, 
you have to view your diet, like your nutrition yeah. and your training through a lens of like, can I adhere to this? Is right. this sustainable? Yep. Will this actually help me five years from now? Like exactly. you put up a post not too long ago and like I told like all of my clients, I was like, hey, you need to hear what this dude said. And That's it was, awesome. um, it was like, I don't care how much weight you lose in six weeks. I care how much weight you keep off in six years or something like that. Exactly. And I was man. like, yeah, I was like, this guy. Yeah. You know, hey, I, I really appreciate that because that's like the biggest compliment that I can get because I try to keep it practical and like to the point. I try mm -hmm. not to use super big words. I just want to help as many people as I can. Um, and yeah, to your point on that, man, it's that quote. Like, yeah, it's just so important. Like, I don't care. Like, I do post a bunch of transformation pictures and stuff, but I'm always like even a little bit hesitant to post like a 12 week transformation because it's so important. Like keeping that weight off long term, I would rather somebody lose 10 pounds in 12 weeks and the, this time next year still be down that same 10 pounds rather than lose mm -hmm. 35 pounds in 12 weeks. And then I hear from them next year and they're like, Oh, I've gained it all back, you know? Right. So, yeah. So yeah, I think that's, that's something that is super important to me. Yeah. Sustainability, so, like yep. adherence, like it doesn't matter, you know, and I can't wait to get into this a little bit more, but yeah. in general, like it doesn't matter what, what, your dietary preferences are it doesn't right. matter like all those things that people assume are extremely important like hey do i need to do keto do i need to do this do i need to be um intermittent fasting can i do carb cycling can i mm -hmm. backload like all of that does not matter if right you can't do it long term so exactly um yep. so yeah that's one of the things i'd love to get into a little bit more but before yeah, we man. do that um so tell us a little bit about being an at-home nutrition coach. What's that like? Being a, it's like being a stay-at-home dad. Yeah. No, not, not really. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, a, it's cool though, man. Like, um, it's got its pros and cons. Like, mm -hmm. obviously the pros are I kind of make my own schedule and I, I work whenever I want and I get to help a lot more people than if I was working in person just because more people can afford online coaching than they can mm -hmm. like one-on-one -on -one consults or one-on-one -on -one personal training and all those types of things. And then there's also some cons like, like it's great that you can travel and work from wherever you're at. And it's also mm -hmm. bad that you can travel <laughs> and work from wherever you're at. Cause it's so hard to disconnect. Like, especially you want to help people, you want to be available. And so like you may be on vacation and still like checking emails and checking your text. Whereas mm -hmm. Like whenever I was training in person, it's like, hey, like I'm taking a week off. I'll be gone. Like they're not going to see me, right? right? But online, you know, you're still communicating with people all the time and everything. So it's a little bit harder to take time off. But I would definitely say the pros far outweigh the cons. Mm -hmm. And it's it's been great for the most part. So, Yeah, like 10 years ago, nobody was doing online coaching like right like personal training coaching or like nutrition coaching it just like yeah. wasn't a thing like it's nuts? it's crazy like, like how times now? Yeah, yeah times are changing like it's so easy to find a competent coach yeah. i mean it's really easy to find a really crappy coach too but oh yeah because uh, they're everywhere but yep. um yeah like you can just get on instagram find somebody who's doing it look at some of the results that they're getting Yep. see what people are saying in the comments like man all right maybe I'll give this guy a try you know right look them up like check their background and experience and it's not yeah, that's you, you that's, just couldn't you couldn't do that before and now right. it's so easy yep. so yeah and i think like what you just said is so important too like checking you know like if you cuz like we're in this age too where like anybody can be a, a nutrition coach or anybody can be mm -hmm. a trainer or anybody can be an influencer you just got to post mm -hmm. like ab selfies and have 200,000 followers Exactly. Um, so uh, yeah. So so to your point, I always want to encourage people to follow through with like if you see somebody you're thinking about working with, um, ask them questions. Like find out what like literally. I'm no I'm not kidding, man. I want to know if you've seen the same thing. But in my seven or eight years of being a personal trainer and nutrition coach, I've had two people ask me what certifications I have, mm. which is kind of crazy because I think that's something that everyone should ask. And not that like. Not that that's like the be all end all, like it's not all about certifications and education, right, right. but that's a huge part of it, you know? And yeah. 
people need to be somewhat certified or have somewhat like <laughs> understanding of like the science behind nutrition and everything. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like if you're so look at people's profiles, like see what certifications they've got, like ask questions, um, mm-hmm. not just because they've got five hundred thousand followers or whatever. So. Right. Yeah. No. That's that's so true. Like, um, the the certification doesn't mean that you're an expert, right. but it it does show that you have some skin in the game Absolutely. that you're not just a self proclaimed guru. Right. Um, that you you have put some time and effort into learning, or or yeah. in theory, you should have at least. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so Unless that's a good. Like- Unless you're like me in high school or in college and you're just like a slacker, <laughs> which is crazy because now like I love learning and read all the time and stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Funny how times change. Like I, yes. hated, I hated reading in high oh, school. Oh, man. Me too. Like, like there's no way I would do it. <laughs> yeah. And now like half of what I do throughout – well, not half, but yeah. a, a large portion of what I do is write. I write all the time. That's and awesome. I read I do better all at the that. time. So – I got to start writing more. You need to, can you be my writing coach? For sure, man. I'll All do right. my best. I mean, I'm no <laughs> expert, but I don't have an Instagram page just about my writing skills, but. Um, <laughs> You're not an influencer yet. Not a writing influencer. No, nope, but, um, but yeah, no, and nobody reads my stuff. So, <laughs> hey, yet, my yet. Mom reads mine. Oh, yeah. Well, that's good. <laughs> yeah. That's hilarious. So, um, so what makes, what makes you so passionate about helping people change their body composition like what what is it that you love about being a nutrition coach specifically with that uh that clientele um group if you will that like this is like this is what i want to do right so i'm like i'm a little bit of a people pleaser in a way but i just like i love to make people happy right and this stems back to something that can't remember which book I was I was reading, but I, I made this link. So even all the way back to like elementary people, elementary school and like junior high and stuff, I always like give my teachers hugs and I would like suck up to them and stuff. And so my mom would always call me a <laughs> suck up, but it's not really that I was sucking up. I just genuinely enjoyed making people happy and making people mm-hmm. feel good, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so it's not that, not that I, I, I loved hugs. I just loved helping people and making people feel better. Um, and so I think that's, one of the biggest reasons why I'm so passionate about nutrition coaching and helping people lose weight too is because like just seeing them change their life, you know, and having someone who's never been fit before shoot you a text and like, be like, Oh my gosh, like I hit the 50 pound mark or 50 pound down mark. Mm-hmm. Um, or, or I just got back from the doctor and like my blood panels are so much better and mm. all these types of things. It's just like that feeling that you get from seeing that and from hearing that all the time and just helping people in general. Yeah. Um, it's and meaningful. Yeah, yeah, man, it's it's awesome. Like it's there's nothing yeah. else. Like I literally, like there's nothing else that I will ever do. Like I, this is what I'll be doing forever. Like in some way or another. So, mm-hmm. yeah, that's so, awesome. Is that, is that my phone? I think so. Sorry, You're blown man. up, man. Yeah, Lee. Tell me, tell me, you can't be working right now. You're you're oh, busy. Man. I turned it off. I'm sorry. <laughs> Such a dirt. <laughs> Such a dirt. It's all good. It's all good. No worries. I thought it was yours for a second. <laughs> Hold, hold up, just yeah, hello. yeah right, yeah. <laughs> we'll, That'd be we'll funny, pause. right? So, um, yeah, like that's 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 kind of how I feel about you know what it is that I do. Like it's yeah. it's meaningful to to reduce the at least on a net net scale, even if it's a tiny tiny bit, I'm right. still contributing to a reduction in suffering, right? Yep. So it's I'm helping people be more active. I'm helping them get healthier. I'm helping them have better relationships and interactions with their friends and families. Um, I I want to improve people's relationship with food. Yeah. So, and I think, yeah, it's hard work. And sometimes the hours suck. Right. Oh, yeah. um, Especially as you're getting started. Yeah, like as a trainer, like working mornings and nights and everything in between. But the worst, worst blocks. Right, but it's it's rewarding though. Yes, it really is. Yeah, yeah, Um, yeah, man. And I think that's like I think a lot of uh, from what I've seen, I think a lot of 
coaches watch your podcast. And so, like, I could go off onto, like, a whole tangent with that. Like, the things that we're talking about here, like, helping people, that's where new trainers and new coaches need to put all of their focus is mm-hmm. because, like, you start training and all you think about is, like, sales and, like, making a living and, like, stuff like that, which is understandable. And whenever I was thinking about that, like, I was never making any sales. But then whenever I went into, like, every single interaction, every single uh, text message conversation with a potential client, like, literally my whole entire train of thought is, like, how can I help this person right now? And then you start getting more clients and you can build up your clientele and they send yeah. their friends and everything like that. So, yeah, uh, just That's- a little... I hated that aspect of oh, too, cor- corporate fitness. Like, yeah. you have to sell. You mm-hmm. like go out on the floor right now, sell yep. some training. And I'm like, yep. I didn't go to school for that. I don't <laughs> know how to do that. Right. Like, they're like, well, if you're not selling, then why? Like, why? Why are you here? And I'm like, yeah. uh, to service sessions. Yeah. Like to train people. Exactly. I thought that's like, am I a personal trainer or am I a personal salesman <laughs> right i don't like yeah so. like whenever i started training at lifetime i think during my interview they told me that the expectation like your first month is to do like six thousand dollars in sales and i'm like holy, holy shit cow. i'm like six thousand dollars like that's a lot <laughs> man so, do i get paid six thousand right, dollars yeah no not even close unfortunately yeah <laughs> but yeah Dude. yeah they don't teach you that in undergrad kinesiology classes oh. like or nope. even in like most personal train certs, like they're not telling you like, hey, we know that this is going to be your job title, but really they're only going to keep you around if you're bringing money yeah. in. So, right. but yeah, that was, that was kind of a light bulb moment for me. Like yeah. I, instead of focusing on selling, mm-hmm. like my, my goal became, okay, how can I establish my value? Right. Because then it doesn't matter what the price is. Exactly. The people people will either want it or they won't, and they'll yep. pay whatever it is. So, can Absolutely. I can I provide a service to you that will make your life better, that will make you feel better, that will make you sleep better, that will, you know, all of that. And if I was delivering that, and they saw that, then yeah, I, I didn't have to. I, like there were times where I was like, hey, yeah, here's my schedule. Um, if you want to get on my schedule. Uh, go talk to uh, the salespeople yeah. and and fi- you guys figure it out. But here you go. And like I wouldn't even bring up money. And yeah. They'd go over and the salespeople would do all that. And then yeah. that ended because, up working way better for me because right, talking because, about money would make me uncomfortable. Yeah, it's less it's less pressure. And yep. they probably have the sense that you're there to help too, you know, if that's how you go into the appointment. So Exactly. Yeah. So, Alrighty. So what are uh, what are some of the things that you really like and dislike? I mean, we, we talked about this a little bit, but yeah. in in the general scheme of um, the fitness industry or nutrition coaching industry, what are some things that you really like? What are what are areas that you know you you dislike or have have issues with? Um, let's can we start with the dislikes? Sure. Yeah, I feel like. Uh, the longer that like I'm in the industry, like the more jaded I become almost and like the more dislikes I have. So like, I'm probably going to say all this and people are going to be like, man, why is he even in the industry? Like, it sounds like he hates it. Um, but so the, the dislikes are kind of what we talked about earlier. Um, there's a low barrier to entry, right? So anybody can be a nutrition coach. Anybody can get an Instagram handle and take off their shirt and post selfies and become an influencer. And unfortunately, those are the people who spread the most like pseudoscience and they're selling their detoxes and their fat burning. Yeah, yeah. And all that type of stuff. And and you just train. Yes. And you just see so much of it that it's like unbelievable. Um, So that's that's probably up there with some of my biggest dislikes. Um, But there's there's some cool things, too. I think for the most part, like everyone that gets into the industry they want to help people um, overall. Like, yeah, like like we said, there's those people, those influencers who just care about making a buck or, or whatever. But for the most part, I think people want to help people. And that's really cool. And I think sometimes they just get led down the wrong path where uh, they follow the wrong people or they um, or, or, or the pressure to sell and the pressure to make a living makes them like kind of go 
in, in, a, in a fat loss sense, like kind of go for the quick fix, you know, which mm -hmm. is selling these BS supplements yep. and all of that. Um, but yeah, those, that, that would be like my biggest dislike. And uh, also one of my biggest likes is just the fact that people for the most part are passionate and enjoy seeing people succeed. And, mm -hmm. uh, and the relationships that I've built with like with other coaches and stuff like yourself, like we met five years ago at a seminar and we've, kept in touch and mm -hmm. we're both passionate about learning and going to these uh uh seminars and further education and all that type of stuff so yeah yeah it's pretty easy to find other people who take this profession seriously right yeah and yep. so that's the good part is um it's easy to see when people are looking for shortcuts yep who are who are in it for a quick buck like you said yeah and then there's like i did not get in this industry to get rich like right. i understood that you can get to a point where you can make a you know a decent yeah. living and there's some people who make a lot of money and there's mm -hmm. other people who they just they understand that the financial income right is not necessarily the same as like um like you're feeling not good about what you do. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Enjoying what you do. Yep. Not having to sit at a desk from nine to five. Right. Um, I don't have a boss. I love yep. that. Yep. Um, but that means that if I'm going to make some money, I've got to go out and I've got to grind. I've got to find exactly. it. Yep. So I, I like that at the end of the day, most people in this industry are mm -hmm. responsible for their own success. Right. Or failure. Yeah. So, that's huge. But that's, it's on you. So I think that's good. Um, I think so too. And so, it's, and it's funny. Are, are you in? Uh, are you in any of those like personal trainer groups and stuff on Facebook? Yeah, but I don't contribute. Okay. Yeah, I, I, most of the time I lurk. Like I try not to get caught up in too many comments and like be stuck all day having a discussion with people and stuff. But yeah. there's always like the post in there um, where trainers and coaches are like asking, "How do you stand out as a personal trainer?" and to me, it's really not that hard. Like you show that you give a shit, like you go to seminars and you learn yeah. and you help people. And so that just kind of ties back into what we were talking about previously. So. Yeah. Yeah. The, I think the assumption there is like, how do you like, what gimmick do you use or yeah. what, what special talent do you have that yeah. allows you to stand? And it's like, no, just like treat people the way <laughs> that nice. they, Yeah. The way that they want to be treated, the way yeah. you would want to be treated, um, interact with them on on a personal level, get yep. to know them, yep. and uh, and don't be a dick. Exactly. And if you <laughs> can't help them, yeah. then let them know. Don't yep. overpromise, and don't yep. try to like always do your best to over deliver, but don't overpromise. Like that's kind of the way that yeah. I I like that's an easy way to stand out. Like yep. So yeah, I agree. So, um, let's talk a little bit about, uh, your philosophy of nutrition coaching. So when it comes to changing body comp, yeah. um, what are, what are the most important factors or aspects of reducing fat mass? Like what are your dietary priorities? What are your lifestyle, lifestyle factor priorities? Like what is it? Um, let's say I'm a brand new client. Yeah. And I want to lose, you know, 30 pounds. And right. um, how would you go about setting up something like that? So first and foremost, like it would be a conversation and figuring out what someone can actually adhere to. Kind of like, were we talking about this before we started this episode? Yeah. Or Okay. Yeah. Okay. Got you. All right. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah. So it's, uh, it, it's figuring out what someone can actually stick to long term. So mm -hmm. You know, you'll, people always want to jump and do these fad diets, whether it's uh, the keto diet. And I hate to call that a fad diet because it could be good in some situations or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, but people try to uh, try these diets where they expect to lose a bunch of weight really fast. And it's just not something that they can stick to long term. So, they, yeah, they may lose the weight, but they're going to gain it all back. So, number one is finding out what people can stick to, whether that's tracking their food intake, making habit changes or whatever. I am a huge fan of almost everyone tracking their food intake just to get some kind of education of what we're taking in, what portion sizes look like, what foods contain protein, um, 
and all those types of things that, you know, sometimes we think we know, but we mm-hmm. really don't until we actually do it and spend some time tracking our food. But yeah, so adherence is the biggest thing. And then uh, getting our calories in check. Now, there's tons of ways to go about that too. So if someone has a ton of bad habits, if they drink seven or eight Cokes every day, that's a mm-hmm. lot of Cokes. Um, or they eat out fast food three or four times per day. Maybe they've got some low-hanging fruit, so they could just cut out some of those or make some better habit changes, and they're going to reduce their overall calories. Uh, but the best thing to do is to track your calorie intake. Uh, so I usually have people use an app called My Fitness Pal. They log their food, and uh, my clients are checking in with me every single week, and we're making adjustments as need be and everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, but as far as priorities, it's going to be calories, and then you've also got macronutrients, so making sure you've got enough protein, carbs, and fat, and then after that, it's kind of like, okay, sleep is really important too. Like sleep mm-hmm. is huge. Um, and after that, like really there's not a ton of things that matter a, a lot. Like sure, things matter, but those are going to be like the three or four things that are going to get most people like 99% of their results with yeah. that loss. Yeah. So those are kind of the, the big rocks with everything else being small details. So. Yeah, that's that's exactly how how I prioritize things. Like if you can't stick to it, you yeah. could have the perfect diet. You could have yeah. the perfect diet as far as calorie breakdown for you right. specifically, macronutrient breakdown that fits like your preferences perfectly and and allows you to uh, maximize maintenance of muscle tissue and keeps your hormones optimized and delivers enough high intensity fuel so that you're delivering a potent training stimulus. Yeah. But if you can't stick to it, what are you going to like? What's, what's the, the point? point? Yeah. So you have like the perfect diet is only perfect if you can stick to it. Yeah. Like and that's, and I, th- I think like, I just rambled a little bit, but you pretty much summed up my philosophy <laughs> right there. So well done. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and that's the thing that is most important for most people is figuring out how we can stick to it because people don't usually don't need to know about protein metabolism and the biochemistry of fat and things like that. People need to know how when they go out this weekend to celebrate Memorial Day, they need to have a strategy to stick to and follow so that they can stay on their plan, whether that's mm-hmm. tracking macros, whether it's their nutrition. Think ahead about it. Think about what's going to come up, what's, what's going to be going on. Get a plan for yourself and then stick to it. So those are the things that people need to focus on. So, Yeah, it's, it's the – I think a lot of people are, are either afraid to do that or they just assume that it's so tedious and boring. And it's like, right. well, but Not progress – yeah, but progress is, is pretty awesome. And exactly. So if you stick with it enough – Yep. And, and you understand that there are other ways to evaluate change than just the needle on the scale, the position yep. of, or what, whatever number comes up on the scale yeah. there. Like, how do you feel? How do yep. you fit in your clothes? Um, how are you sleeping? Like there's all these different variables that are also useful tools to, to take into account. But yeah. Um, yeah. I yeah. Agree with- those things are so important and like unfortunately too many people get caught up on just the number on the scale but like it's entirely possible too if someone is focusing on fat loss and they just began strength training like they might realistically be able to gain two or three pounds of muscle and lose two or three pounds of fat so like Mm. their measurements are going to be going down and they're going to be feeling better and looking better but uh the scale says the same thing so yeah i love that you said that that's so important yeah so um let's see Related to that, um, so back to back to the example, mm-hmm. right? So uh, I want to lose thirty pounds. So we found something that I think that I can adhere to. Yeah. How? What's what's your typical way of um, either predicting mm-hmm. a client's calories or calculating a client's calories? What What are some useful ways that you uh, that you that you do that or find that yeah man it's that's it's funny that you asked so there's like so many different ways you can go about this there's like um there's calculators that you can find online like to estimate your basal metabolic rate and mm-hmm. all those types of things you could keep a food log for two weeks track your calories see how much you're taking in see if your weight's changed if it mm-hmm. hasn't then you're probably at maintenance intake 
by now, I've done this so many times that I think like there's so much intuition with it that's like I mm. can just like I'll see like okay this person's 170 pounds and they're probably about around 20 percent body fat and then it's like I just kind of like no you know so yeah. I'll, so I'll take all that information and and have a good understanding of where they need to start at. because like people's metabolisms aren't going to differ a ton like sure like if you've got PCOS or if you've got some type of major metabolic adaptation like yeah you're you're going to need fewer calories but for the most people it's only going to vary within like 10 percent or so from mm -hmm. from those equations that you can find online or um whatever and uh and the, and the biggest error or the biggest mistake that pr people probably make whenever they're setting their calorie intake is overestimating their daily calorie uh expenditure through like non-exercise and stuff so how much they move basically like using that activity multiplier right uh -huh. So like you, so like you use this calculator and it tells you like your BMR is fourteen hundred calories, mm -hmm. but then you've got to multiply that by an activity factor. Whether it's I usually let's say like one point three for someone who is very sedentary, mm -hmm. maybe one point eight for someone who is very active. They're on their feet all day. They they're working. They train for a couple hours or whatever. And mm -hmm. I think a lot of times people drastically overestimate that activity factor, yeah. and so then they're taking in too many calories. <laughs> so. If you're trying to set your your calorie intake, error on the side, and, and if your goal is fat loss, error on the side of the lower end of that activity factor, you know? Mm -hmm. so, yeah, oh, yeah, I think, sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, there's so many ways that you can go about it. Uh, any of the, what is it like? Man, I forget the name, like, oh man, I feel like an idiot. Like the GIF one, whatever, calculator. Or, oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, anyways, I use... Harris used, Benedict. Right? Yeah, that's what I Any used. of those. Yeah. yeah. Like any yeah. of those are going to get you in the ballpark. And like right. it's not as important where you start at as the changes that you make along the way. So like if you start at this calorie intake and you're not losing weight, then one, Adjust. you either need to lower your calories a little bit or two, you need to make sure you're tracking as accurately as you think you're tracking, which is hard because we're all human and like we eat an extra handful of like Doritos or whatever. But <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're not – Tracking is a skill. Yes, and it absolutely. takes time to get good at skills. Mm -hmm. Like, so that's one of those practice. things. Exactly. Practice. And uh, and we 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 make mistakes. We yep. forget to track certain things. And um, I forgot what the exact amount is, but um, I believe it's like a twenty percent plus yeah. or minus error on on food labels. Like. Yeah. If something says it's 100 calories, right. it could be 80 or it yeah. could be 120. Yeah. So we can't be 100% accurate nope. anyway, but you can make – making progress doesn't necessitate 100% accuracy in tracking. Exactly. But it does require consistency in tracking. Yep. So – that's yeah, like you, like you said, there's so many problems with it. Like food labels are often off by a few percent. Like people generally suck at tracking, and sometimes people even misreport by like forty to fifty percent. So, <laughs> so, so, so tracking calories and tracking macros isn't perfect, but yeah. it's one of the best tools that we have. So, yeah, it gives you data, and you can adjust mm -hmm. based off data. But if and, you don't and those have are the any, things, yeah, and if you adjust. don't have anything to to adjust off of, then you, like. You're just going to be guessing. So right. like you said, it, I don't think it matters too much what tool you're using to, to calculate yeah. maintenance level calories um, because it's a prediction equation. Yep. That's like, it. They're all predictions. So you're, you're going to be – you're never going to be 100% accurate anyway. From that, it just – so I, I usually spend a week or two at predicted maintenance level calories to yeah. determine – is this actually yep. maintenance level? And then, and then I, I'm learning more about how, like, the body's set point is right. kind of like it'll maintain a set point based off a range of calories. Yeah. And so maintenance level might actually be your you might be on the high end of that range. You might be on the low end of that range. And so depending on what your goal is and, and how drastic you're creating a calorie deficit or calorie surplus, it may take a little longer to see a change. Um, yep. But because the majority of my clients are athletes, mm -hmm. my goal is to get them as comfortable as possible at a 
at a relatively consistent calorie range. Yeah. And then change body composition by altering their their training, like the yeah. the calorie output side of the equation I instead love of instead of the calorie input side of the equation, just because I think that that fits that population better. Yep. But I with, agree. With clients who like, hey, I I'm a 40 year old mom and I want to lose weight and I have time to work out, you know, three days a week and yeah. all I've ever done is, you know, the treadmill and the elliptical and the stairmaster and um, yeah. So how do I do that? It's like, all right, yeah. this is a perfect time. Like, okay, I want to teach you how to squat. I want to teach you how to deadlift. I want to. I like. I don't want you to fall and like break your hip in a right. in, you know twenty years. So we've got to increase your bone mineral density, and then then we can start looking at you know figuring out your calories, reducing your calories, getting yeah. into a deficit, things like that. So yeah, there's, um, there's a lot of stuff. Yeah, there's so it, everything's more complex than we think it right. is. Right. So you uh, with your athletes and stuff, like you have them uh, pretty much eat within the range of a same calorie intake for a couple of weeks and you monitor like body weight and things mm-hmm. and then you make adjustments after that. Yep. Okay. Yeah. I yep. think that's like, that. that's pretty ideal, like ideal thing to do. Yeah. So yeah. how do you, um, like I, I'm, I try to be really flexible because priority, priority number one is adherence. So right. but I still have kind of like my ideal, uh, protein recommendation, my ideal fat recommendation, my ideal yeah. carbohydrate rep- recommendation. So do you have kind of, do you have those in mind when you're programming out someone's macros and, and what, what would that look like for an example? Uh, client? So you mean like, uh, allowing like flexibility. So it's like not telling someone like, Hey, your goal is 150 grams of protein, but like rather like a range. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Like, do you, do you have a set number and is it okay. like, like, is it, Okay, for every single client, yeah. my goal is they have to get one gram of protein per pound okay. of body weight. Is it like that, or is it like, um, okay, well, this client is definitely not going to get anywhere close to that. So, right. do you adjust, or do you uh, do you say no? Like, this is the minimum goal. You have to hit this, and if you right. if you're not hitting it, then you no, know. no. And and like you said, like <laughs> adherence being number one, you've got to adjust. Like you've got to meet people where they're at. So like if I get someone who's uh, right now, if they're eating like 90 grams of protein per day and I tell them to eat 170 grams of protein per day, that's going to be like a huge difference. Even if 170 yeah. grams of protein is optimal for them or whatever optimal is, yeah. uh, we're going to like kind of stair step that up. So maybe for the first two weeks, we're eating 110 grams of protein and they do a good job hitting that. The next week we're eating like 120 grams of protein. But gotcha. as we're working like those goals up and everything, I don't ever expect people to be perfect. So if they're supposed to hit 140 grams of protein, I don't want them to hit 140 grams of protein. Like I actually tell people that I'd rather someone be plus or minus like five to eight grams consistently because that's mm-hmm. going to be like much more reasonable, much more realistic for them to stick to. Yeah. Um, and, and I also will do things like, you know, like most of the time your goal is to be within five to eight grams of your protein target, your fat target and your carb target. Mm-hmm. But but it's also a spectrum. Like if you're traveling for work, it's okay if this week if we don't hit our macros, if we just hit our calorie intake, because mm-hmm. the food environment's going to be hard. You don't have full control over the food. Macros may not be listed, so it's totally okay to have a little bit of flexibility. Uh, with other clients, maybe we've got like default strategies to where uh, on the weekends maybe they hit calories and protein, but they don't stress too much about carbs and fat. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it all kind of ties back into like what the person can do and what is sustainable for them long term. And for I, I don't think for most people that's going to be hitting like the one gram uh, protein per pound of body weight consistently or or whatever maybe like that target dead on, you know. Right. So yeah, so I definitely try to have some flexibility like that, and I don't start everyone off at like one gram per pound. I would love for everyone to do that because I think there's so many benefits of eating more protein. Mm-hmm. But it's just not realistic. So most people are going to be probably on a little bit lower end of that range. Maybe it's 0.7 grams per pound of protein or per pound of mm-hmm. lean body mass. Um, gotcha. Yeah. So. Gotcha. Is that is that is that what you were kind of asking? Yeah. Like, no. That's, okay. Cool. That's perfect. So, because yeah. yeah, in the back of my mind, I'm um, I'm always like, okay, this is what data the research yeah. says is you know, yep. quote unquote optimal. Right. But, but, you know, that's with a specific population or that's with 
uh, very strict um, kind of controls. Like you yeah. can do that, but in reality, you don't always yep. have that. So, but kind of in the back of my mind, I I'm always hoping and suggesting that you know, like, hey, if you think you f- you feel recovered now, yeah, just exactly. wait. Yeah, yeah like man. you can always make things better, and so. Yeah. Um, my goal is to always get them up to that point. And yeah. if they, if they can handle that and they're, and they want to, then like, yeah. shoot, let's go above that. Like you can't yeah. really OD on protein. So right. yeah, it's like, um, it's like our coach brain. We know like how, how important it is like protein, for example, and we know like what the optimal range is. Right. But then we may get a client and it could be like a 240 pound guy and he's like struggling to hit hundred grams of protein. And you're mm-hmm. just like, dude, like. This is so important. Like, even if we get you like to 150 grams of protein, it's going to make such a big difference. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like you said, like the real world is different than the than the studies and everything. So. Right. So, but yeah, when I'm when I'm programming out, I kind of I have my ideal numbers yeah. set yep. up, and then it's all it never stays that. Like, it's always going to fluctuate. But I'm always kind of looking for about one gram of protein per pound of body weight. Same here. Um, I'm always looking for at about 25 to 30% of total calories coming from fat. Yep. Just for hormonal health, yeah. which kind of determines everything else. And then yeah. whatever's left over carbs. Yeah. And that's, that's when, very similar to what I do. Like very, very, very similar. So, gotcha. yeah. so awesome. You'll have to review my book then and tell me that it's amazing. <laughs> hey, I would love to, man. <laughs> Wait, you haven't even told me that. Yeah, so I wrote I wrote a book called The Self Reliant Diet. I haven't released it yet. But yeah, okay. it's it's like it's my philosophy of of essentially all of this yeah. stuff, like how to like how metabolism works. Yeah. Like okay. how it's like it's a budget. It's like if you understand money, then right. you can understand how a calorie works yeah. and then um the function of all the macronutrients so that you right. understand why. And then um, how to calculate your calories, nice. how, to, how to use MyFitnessPal, right. how to set up a calorie deficit, um, and a couple different ways to do that, how to set up a, a calorie surplus, and how yeah. to live at maintenance. I love that, man. Is, that, uh, is it going to be like an ebook, or is it going to be hard copy? Eventually, hopefully hard copy, but uh, okay. hopefully soon, I'm, uh, I'm going to get that up on the website. And, uh, but yeah, at this point, awesome, I'm... Man. I'm still doing the editing and need some people to tell me if I'm stupid or not with some of my <laughs> concepts. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll have to send you a cool, copy man. of that. Yeah, I'll be Take happy it. to. So That's awesome. it's, it's kind of the, the other end of the spectrum. Like, so this is my second book. I wrote another book 2013 called hormonal nutrition, which was kind of yeah. my attempt to get people to either decrease fat mass or increase muscle mass or whatever their goal was without having to count calories because at that time uh i was not a competent enough coach to explain to my clients how important it was to count calories and track macros so that's awesome uh, so i'm i'm trying to like figure out multiple ways of explaining essentially the same thing right but giving people different tools to you know to do so Sure. Um, that's really cool. So, but yeah, that's kind of, that's essentially how I set it up. And then, you know, I've got some people who are like, I get to eat all this fat. Can I, right. can I eat more? And I'm like, hell yeah, let's bump you up even yeah. higher. And like, I don't yeah. care about carbs. That's Shoot, a lot let's of, get- a lot of personal preference, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that just helps with the adherence and, and all that. So, yeah. um, alrighty. So that's really interesting. I think a lot of people who, um, who have learned things from, I think we probably have a lot of the same influences and in where we initially learned a lot of this stuff from. Yeah. Especially um, since we met at the same seminar, you know? Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Shout out to him. Lane. Yeah. Right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, um, uh, until I had put it into practice, I was like, I was like, I don't know if like, I don't know if my clients are going to be able to do this. Like, but then when I did it, I was like, Oh, okay. It's, it just takes a little bit of practice. Like yeah. people are like, it's going to take me 20 minutes to track everything. Like, no, it's not bad. It, 
it's really it, it'll take you a couple minutes like yeah. one to two minutes before each meal right. if you're gonna track right before the meal and like it's yeah it, you, you i mean really after, fast at it yeah after like a month or so i think that it probably should take most people around like 10 minutes per day like mm-hmm. i think right now if I had to guess, because like all the foods that I eat are already in my database and everything, it probably takes me like three to five minutes per day of like tracking everything, you know? Yeah. And it's well worth it to, to know that you're taking in the right amount and for, for whatever your goal is, whether it's losing fat, building muscle or whatever. So, yeah. And with my fitness pal, like I've yet to find too many foods that aren't in there. Like right. their inventory is insane. And you can like with their barcode scanner, like you can yeah. just like, boom. So easy. So nice. So, yeah, super, super convenient. It really is. So, alrighty. So, we'll kind of switch gears a little bit here. Um, Where, where do you see yourself as a personal trainer and as a nutrition coach? Where does that fit into the realm of like athletic performance or sport performance? Um, As opposed to like fat loss. Sure. Yeah. Well, for one, I think you know, like maintaining optimal body composition for whatever your sport is, mm-hmm. is, is really important. But there's also like things I've worked with athletes and stuff who just aren't real sure on how to recover as best they can between training sessions, between events and all of those types of things. So, uh, so, so yes, yeah, so it's super important to make sure that you're like getting enough protein for muscle recovery between training sessions, making sure that you're especially for athletes that like your calories are sufficient, like your energy availability is good uh, mm-hmm. to maintain optimal performance and everything like that. Um, so, so it's, it's interesting because like it's a lot of the same things as with working with someone on fat loss, mm-hmm. but there's really small differences. Like for an athlete, I would say meal timing starts to become a little bit more important, especially mm-hmm. if you train multiple times per day. Uh, mm-hmm. Protein timing becomes a little bit more important, like spacing out your protein meals throughout the day. Mm-hmm. Whereas with fat loss, you know, it's, it's, it's still kind of important, but like you could go, you could even do like intermittent fasting where you don't have protein for a long window and you're still going to make progress. So yep. those are like the biggest differences is with, between fat loss and athletic training, I guess. Gotcha. Uh, yeah. And yeah, no, I, I think, um, athletes have tend to have no idea how recovery is so nutrient driven calorie and nutrient driven and so like like when i was in college i ran cross country and track and field and we'd finish every run and i'd go and get right into the ice bath and i was in there for 10 to 15 minutes yeah i had no no idea how many calories i was getting i had no idea how much protein i was getting um but think about how much better of an athlete you like like you like even if you were good think about how much better you would have been if you'd have had somebody telling you that you know? I know. It's Nuts. insane. I yeah. wish. I yeah. wish that I Same knew. Here. I wish I could go back in time. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I knew how to strength train correctly. Yes. And I wish I knew how to eat. Absolutely. Like, It'd things be would so have been huge. different. Yeah. Yeah. I'd, I'd be in the NBA by now. Like, hands down. <laughs> I'd be dunking on people. <laughs> <laughs> I saw oh, you. Uh, you've got you've got some ups, man. I saw. A little bit. That was whatever you saw. Let me... <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> that was like. Probably five or six years ago, so I probably I, I probably couldn't touch the net right now. <laughs> but yeah, I used to have some ups. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, yeah it was a post about uh, how when the heavier you deadlift, the higher you were jumping or something. Okay, like that. yeah, man. There's a huge correlation for me. Yeah, uh, when my deadlift and my squat numbers were going up, my that's whenever I learned I could dunk. You know, yeah. so my vertical would go up. But it's kind of only to a point. So like, if someone right now. This is like a totally different like side tangent here. But if like if somebody squats 135 right now, like if they improve that to 315, their vertical is inevitably going to go up. But there's not going to be as big of a difference going from like 315 to 405 as far as vertical height. Don't ask me to explain that. Explain why. There's there's <laughs> there's scientific reasons. But it's kind of like a law of diminishing returns. So uh, so sometimes I cringe whenever I see like these high school athletes and stuff squatting like 500 with like god awful form and yeah. i'm like dude like that's not gonna make them better like if anything it's gonna make them worse or freaking break their back so for sure yeah like like force output is mm-hmm. a very important factor but the rate right. of force development is yeah. also an extreme that's what i was force. looking for so how much force can you 
push into the ground in exactly. a set amount of time. Like that's going to have a much, a much more uh, significant impact on your jumping ability. Let's say right, rather than um, like max top end strength. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So it's all like your potential for rate of force development tends to go up the more weight that you right you know can move. So yeah, it's all it's all kind of like related to potential and and all that but you know for for uh just increasing your vertical you want to hit multiple points on the force velocity curve you know you want to hit max effort movements you want to hit slower uh slightly less weight but a slower contraction and then you want to work you know extremely slower eccentrics maybe some pauses and fast concentrics and then some you know, very, very lightweight, if you will, plyometrics. And when you're training the nervous system like that, then it's going to, it's going to respond really well to some, to some jumping. So, um, yeah. 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 So you're, you're way smarter than me on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like I said, I can like say what happens, but I'm not going <laughs> to explain rate of force development and everything. <laughs> I used to be able to, man, but like yeah. I lost it. I forgot it, you know? Well, I mean, it's not it's not something you need to use with your clients. Right. Exactly. Right? So, yep. Yep. But um, so let's see. Alrighty. So, what do you see as like the most important factors related to coaching a client? Like, so aside from from just the uh, the specifics of of okay, here's di- uh, client. Here's your yeah. diet follow this and I'll help you. Like as far as like the coaching goes, like how, how are you, uh, how do you maximize your success as a coach? I guess. Yeah. So get your clients to like you, Mm. like be cool, be nice to them. Yeah. Yeah. And if they like you, then they're going to put in more work and they're going to try harder because they don't want to disappoint you. Mm. If, (laughs) <laughs> they don't like you. Well, for one, they're probably not even going to sign up, but they're not going to be as motivated to put forth effort into the training mm-hmm. program or the nutrition plan or whatever. So mm-hmm. like the overarching thing is, and, it, and it's, it's kind of uh, hard to say, just be likable because like some people just don't have that personality, but there's still things you can do. Like ask clients personal questions about their kids, about their family, uh, mm-hmm. about their hobbies, and, like mm-hmm. different things and just try to form that connection before you start talking about protein and stuff so yeah yeah you've got to you've got to build that bridge first yeah you can start taking things across so yeah it's, it's all about people mm-hmm. that's good um all right so is is what you're doing right now is this your dream job yes yeah yeah like hands down um yeah i don't think that i'll ever do anything else <laughs> Yeah, this is it. Yeah, this is, yeah. I I will say I have for the last like five or six years had a dream of owning my own gym, but I love (laughs) what I'm doing right now with far less stress than gym ownership and not having to be at the gym from like 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. Like right now I can be off work by five or six every day if I want to, and then I can hang Mm -hmm. out with my son in the evenings, Mm -hmm. and that is really important. But I still like have that dream back there of one day owning a gym and Mm. it might happen. I will see. Um, but yeah, but for the most part, this is my dream job. Gotcha. That's awesome. That's kind of, that's how I feel. Like I wake up and I'm like, it's okay that I have to wake up at four 30 most days. Cause like, it's like, I get to go hang out with people that I like and, and I get to at least try to make their lives better. Awesome. man. If I'm not, yeah, if I'm not doing it, then I guess they wouldn't keep paying me to 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 do it. So right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So this is this is an important one right here. Okay? okay, how does someone go about picking a competent personal trainer, either online or a nutrition coach? Uh, how many followers they have? I'm just mm. kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Don't pick me uh, then. Yeah. No. Uh, <laughs> So, yeah, so back to what we were talking about earlier, uh, make sure they're they're at least certified. Like they've Mm -hmm. put in some work, like understanding the science behind why things work and stuff. Um, And number two, like what do their clients say about them? So it's not a 
you could click on someone's profile and see like one of their transformation pictures. And then you could like literally message that client of the coach that you're the prospective coach or whatever. Mm -hmm. And you can ask the client, like, how was your experience of working with Derek, you know, mm -hmm. and see what they say. Um, yeah. So those, those things are huge. Like, like make sure that the person is legit. They're not just like someone making stuff up and make sure they get good results with their clients and mm -hmm. the clients enjoy working with them. So, yeah, no, that's, that's huge. I was just having a conversation with, with one of my clients the other day mm -hmm. and we were talking about just business in general, but yeah. he, he was saying even now, even with Facebook, even with Instagram, even with, you know, Yelp, even with all of these different ways to like, uh, like advertise and to promote your product or your service, like the number one way to get a new client mm -hmm. or to get a sale, whatever the case may be, yeah. it's all, it's all word of mouth. Like right. Even now, like people, like that's why people read reviews on Yelp. Yeah. They don't just like look, okay, like. Yeah, people look at the stars and all yep. that stuff. But on Amazon, people write reviews because yeah. people read reviews. So yeah. asking somebody what they what their experience has been like and yeah. with a specific coach, I think that's that's excellent advice. Yeah. So the uh, the company that I work for right now, Stronger You Nutrition, like I mean, it's just grown massively, and it's all been by word of mouth. Like our clients wow. just like kind of seeing our praises, you know, mm -hmm. and. I think right now in our Facebook group, it's like up to 20,000 members, both current wow. and former clients and mm -hmm. have never spent to my knowledge, like they've never spent a dollar on like advertising, you know? Wow. So, yeah. It's just about doing great work, uh, for people and then, and having them people tell their friends and tell their family and share it on Facebook. And so, yeah, that's cool. So yeah. that gives us a perfect segue of how can people who want to work with you yeah. or work with stronger you how can they how can they find you how can they reach out to you what's your instagram what's your twitter what's your facebook all of that uh so yeah email like if someone was interested in working with me email would probably be the best uh my email <laughs> god i forgot my email um, <laughs> it's it's uh it's derek d e r e k at strongeryoufit.com and on instagram it's at D Stanley fit. And then on Facebook, you can just find me, uh, by searching for Derek Stanley. I assume, uh, I'm probably most active on, uh, well, it depends on the week. Most of the time I'm probably most active on Facebook. So that's probably the best place to add me. Um, uh, but yeah, also I'm fairly active on Instagram too. So gotcha. yeah, yeah, that's, that's where I see a lot of your stuff. Well, I, both Instagram, and, Instagram and yeah. Facebook. Yeah. So I try to like I try to be on there and post something at least once per day, but sometimes I suck yeah. and it's like five days or whatever. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> well, then then you're not an influencer, right? I, Sorry, I never will be, man. <laughs> yeah. Sweet. So, um, this can be, uh, you know, like coaching related, nutrition yeah. related, training related, or completely unrelated. What is something that you're reading or learning about right now? Uh, so like I've read a few books this year on sleep and mm. so like, actually this is the book I'm reading right now. It's called why we sleep by mm. Matthew Walker. And it's just been like so amazing. And so eye opening. like I've probably taken more notes and like underline more things in that book than anything else. Mm. But I've just been, I don't know, man, I've been like a sleep evangelist lately or something. Like I've just been trying to like <laughs> learn all about it. And like, I'm telling everyone uh, but it's just, it's so important. And even for athletic performance, like getting a bad night of sleep before competition can decrease your force output or your, uh, your vertical by like 30%, you know? So wow. it's just, yeah, so it's nuts, man. So yeah, I've been learning a lot about sleep. Uh, that's, that's one of the books I've been reading. And I've also been making my way back through, uh, James Clear's book, Atomic Habits, which is something that I think is super practical and most people could get a ton of benefit from. Mm -hmm. um, it's probably like the second or third. Actually, it's probably the third time I've read through that. Um, so those are the two books I'm going through right now. Thanks. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, oh, I almost forgot. Yeah. What was that? Uh, what was that certification that you just finished up? Uh, the uh, Mac Nutrition University. Yeah. 
yeah, yeah tell so us about that a little bit man that was awesome so yeah it's a a, a year-long uh, nutrition certification uh starts off you know like the first few lectures you're learning about research studies and how to uh, read and better understand research and then you get into like biochemistry of protein metabolism and fat metabolism and carb metabolism and all that and then it also goes through like some softer skills of working with people and uh, coaching people um, and all those things but yeah it's just a year-long course which is super legit and probably the best one out there yeah a year yeah. long where you're yeah. not only learning the science but also how to apply the science with a client like man, yeah it sounds it's legit. pretty good yeah yeah, that's cool. I loved it. Yep. That's awesome. We need more coaches doing stuff like that. Yeah, man. It's such a good so. course, too. I don't awesome. get paid anything for saying that, I promise. <laughs> yeah. Sweet. So um, let's finish up with uh, like what's a, one, like a, a significant quote or a piece of advice that you have um, that you found to be inspirational or motivational or important that you think everybody needs to hear right now? Um, man, uh, probably you don't know anything. Mm. That, sounds, wow. that sounds mean. But yeah, it's like <laughs> a lot of people come into the industry and they think they know everything and they're not coachable and they don't continue to learn. So yeah. understand that you don't know as much as you, you think you know. So like whenever I started training at Lifetime, I went up to a few of the experienced trainers and I actually told them, I'm like, hey, if you ever see me doing anything stupid, please let me know and come tell me. And I think that's the mindset and the attitude that people need to have as they're coming into the industry is yeah. to realize how much they don't know and to continue trying to learn from people who have been doing it longer than them and who know more than them. So, Yeah. yeah. And related to that, I think it's funny because we don't know what we don't know. Exactly. The, the assumption is like, Man, if you've read a muscle and fitness magazine or yeah. if you've read, you know, men's health or women's health, whatever, whatever it is, like, like oh, I know. I know pretty expert. much everything. Yeah. So, but yeah, <laughs> there's so much out there. And if you stop learning, yeah, then you're doing a disservice to For yourself sure. and your clients. So I think, man, that is yeah. amazing advice. Yeah. I, I don't learning. know anything. Yeah. I tell my clients that sometimes. Yeah. Like, there's just yep. tons of stuff I don't know. Absolutely. So, but I'll it's find good out. that you can admit that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that's like awesome. The the body of knowledge in our industry is growing exponentially so right. fast all the time. So as yeah. soon as you think you know everything, like dude, tomorrow you're gonna be left behind. Yeah. I see so, uh I see Facebook posts sometimes on like that Tom Hop app from like two years ago and I just like cringe at myself. I'm like, oh <laughs> shit. I'm like, man, why did I say that? That's so stupid. <laughs> but yeah. Yep. That's so funny. I had uh I had Wade Rice on here. He's a physical yeah. therapist. And he says, he said that you should be embarrassed yes. by things that you said and did. I love and, that. Three years ago. Like, he's like, he, within that three years, like, eh, he's like, I can understand. But like three years, you should be embarrassed by the, the way that you were working with your clients. Yeah. Not by what you were trying to accomplish, right. but just by like, like so much changes so fast. You should be embarrassed that you were using something so archaic. Hey, I guess that means I'm on the right track. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's awesome. That's good to know. So, all right, man. Well, anything else you uh, you want to throw in and discuss or feeling pretty good about this? Yeah, man. That was that was fun. Yeah. yeah. I, I know we've, been, we've been talking about it for a few weeks, so I appreciate yeah. uh, making sure. the time and finally, finally getting together on it. So. Yeah, well, no, you're – doing me a huge favor because there's not too cool. many other I don't know too many other coaches nutrition coaches yeah that want to have these kind of conversations right just because they're like they're afraid they're either going to lose clients because you know like yeah oh, like, well, this guy sounds like he knows way better than 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 me or, or right. than my coach whatever so like shoot man there's there's way more people out there that need the help than yeah. there are currently people offering help so I think Agreed. these are important conversations we need to have, and and this only makes like this is going to make me a better coach. I hope that it makes you know you a better coach. Yeah, I hope that for sure, people man. people realize that, um, yeah, listening to this is going to yeah. hopefully turn some wheels and get them yeah. thinking like, hey, do I need a do I need a coach? Right. Maybe. All right. Let me let me email Derek. 
Yeah. So there you go. The goal. Yeah. So, <laughs> but yeah, man, thank you so much for coming on. For sure. And uh, hopefully we'll have you on again in the future, and we can we can go a little bit more in in depth into you know some more stuff that you're learning yeah. and and yeah, we'll just I'll we'll be keep uh, the super down for that. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you all for watching and listening. And uh, yeah, go follow Derek. Awesome, man. Thank you. All right. Take care. See you later.